Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki, sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki, sound bowl, crystal healing, and now witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. Find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, I wanted to know that I'm recording this prior to the election. So, yes, there is a lot of energy flying around with many mixed emotions. As for how to deal with this, no matter what, grounding our energy is so important. No matter what the results are, we all need to come back into our hearts center and hold the presence of life. I was asked to lead a hike by our local Jewish community center here to help the healing that will need to come forward. Again, no matter what your vote was, we need to come back into our heart. And so my guidance will be to find the peace within you by connecting with the sacred elements of mother earth. Let it begin with you. Just imagine if everyone could find peace within them that's what we need first and foremost and as we raise the vibration to peace we allow all those other emotions of fear the anxiety the worry to dissipate and transmute just for today as we say in Reiki be present yes just take a moment and feel that right into your heart be present with you So this coming week, we also have a powerful portal of energy, 1111 on Monday. 11 is a master number in numerology. The number one is about new beginnings and makes 1111 November a powerful force and manifesting powerhouse. It represents growth, development, inspiration, and spiritual enlightenment. So at 1111 is all that energy quadrupled of ones. So 1111 is an energy that has so much weight to it. The doors to the spiritual world just kind of open up with this portal of energy, this period, 
from 11, 11 in November, all the way through, all the way through to winter, we pull our energy and we connect deeper and deeper. And we're opening up to that unique part of vibration frequency that each one of us carries. It is an energetic reset. It's a virtual gateway that opens from the ethers to our souls here on the 3D earth. And it is designed to give you a power boost to start fresh, exactly what we need coming out of this week. Allow yourself to take the time to come into your heart, to ground, to open up for these new beginnings for your soul to make some changes, to feel the light that is all around us, which is what we're going to talk about today in this episode. Don't ignore how you're feeling. Allow those emotions to transmute. And I will offer a mark of a meditation on 1111 to help you activate this energy, lift the vibrations. DM me if you want the link to join. It will be in my energy mastery group. We also have so much going on. We also have a full moon in Taurus opening up on the 15th. Taurus is a fixed and grounding energy. So it is going to help us ground some of this energy. It's the last of the super moons, meaning that moon is going to be very close to earth. We're going to feel all these emotions that have been accumulating all this energy for the past several months. So we are in Scorpio season. We have to remember to allow ourselves to transmute this energy, to go deep, to really work with that emotional body. We have a big conjunction coming up too, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. A lot of the astrologers are talking about it, but it is the opportunity to help yourself understand this light that is coming all around us, to help you understand how you can work in the spiritual realm, create a spiritual practice. And if you don't have one, my Empowered Spirit Programs, my soul work is designed to help you learn how to work with your energy fields, your aura, so that you can come back to center, to ground, and to open up through a daily practice your innate abilities. I want to bring you another testimonial from one of my students and what she has to say about the programs and the changes that has brought forth for her. Her name is Andy Carroll. Let's listen to what she has to say. Hi, my name is Andrea Carroll. I started working with Terry about five years ago when I was going through a major life change, maybe what I would call a crisis at the time, uh, through a messy divorce. And I really wasn't sure what it was that I was looking for. And I heard about a sound bowl therapy. And from that point forward, I met Terry and she taught me about Reiki, told me to come in for a session. And through that, I was able to actually participate in her Empowered Spirit program and teach myself these tools. And my life has changed dramatically in the last five years. I am so much happier. I'm able to heal myself when I have issues and things going on, recognize my, my own anxiety at times and help those around me. My life is totally different now. I have a, a different job. I've gotten a promotion. I'm remarried. I have a stepchild now. And I just have so much more peace in my life. And I'm so happy that I met Terry and was able to put these tools to good use for myself. So yes, I am a spiritual mentor. Andy continues to grow and work with Reiki and share her gifts in her field of expertise. I have helped hers and others tap into their soul to learn more about themselves, how to work through past traumas, and how to step forward in life. I have many tools in which I can guide you through. Want to know more? Schedule a complimentary spiritual upgrade breakthrough call with me. Let's talk about how I can guide you into building your practice, help you move through the difficulties in life, transmute those energies, and find the love for your soul that will inspire you to be in your heart. I'll put the links for the call in my show notes. So in today's episode, as I continue this series on expanding your consciousness, I am again honored to bring you another amazing spiritual teacher and author, Bob Frisell. He is the author of many books, and today he's sharing the 30th anniversary of his book, Nothing in This Book is True, but it's exactly how things are. 
Bob explores our impending planetary ascend into higher consciousness and what you can do to support it. We are celebrating this 30th anniversary of this book, and we're going to get into talking about all the many ways that you can understand some of the secrets, some of the lies that they've been telling us, history of the earth, the Merkaba activation, and his expertise in breath alchemy. Before we begin, let's take a moment to pause, center, and set an intention for peace within. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes. Take a nice deep inhale, breathing up the body. And as you exhale, call all your energy into you. Call it in. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, begin to slow down, grounding, center. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. Exhale, dropping right into the heart, right into the deepest part of your heart. Feel that connection, your spirit and the greater spirit, source, light, creator. Know that you are loved, guided, protected, feeling all this energy coming in around us. As we take this time to call in our Reiki masters, the teachers that have come before us, the archangels to open the heart with love and joy, calling in the crystal beings for amusement, magnification, calling in your higher self right above the crown to align to receive all these messages for you. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body and exhale right into the heart, right here into the very center, feeling that touch of presence, the peace, the joy of your heart, your light. Feel it, know thyself to be true in this vibration in your heart. Setting this intention all around you, opening up to this beautiful light, this vibration. Setting that energy. Take another deep inhale. And exhale, just circulating that breath. Let it open up right through the heart, setting it all through the aura. And as you're ready, and as you're ready, Heart open, blinking your eyes, back open, coming back. So my guest today, Bob Frisell, is the founder of the Breath Academy Technique and a teacher of 37 years. His books are regarded as underground spiritual classics. In addition to the 30th anniversary of Nothing in This Book is True, but it's exactly how things are, he is the author of Catching the Ascension Wave, Something in This Book is True, and You Are a Spiritual Being Having a Human Experience. His books are published in 25 languages and are available in more than 30 countries. Musicians have credited the ideas presented in Bob's book as a source of inspiration for their own creative work. He is on a mission to helping as many thousands of men and women as he can in opening them up to their unlimited potential by discovering that the resolution to any unwanted condition lies within them first. Bob gives private breath alchemy sessions on Skype along with the coaching consultations on Skype too. On a personal note, Bob is a nature enthusiast. He loves to hike and all manners of cat, squirrels, ducks, Wild turkeys, deer, and redwood trees catch his eyes. He lives in Sonoma, California. So let us welcome Bob to the show. Welcome, Bob. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Glad to be here and uh, look forward to spending some time with you because guess what? Uh, we get to talk about my favorite topics and uh, that's to me is always exciting. So thanks. I'm looking forward to this. Well, I will admit these are my favorite that's, topics, that's, too. That's very good. We got something in common there, and I think we're good to go. Yes, we do. And congratulations, 30th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Before we jump in, though, Bob, if you would, just give our listeners a little bit of a background. Like, what led to that first encounter with this work? What led you to really opening up to this? 
what led me to really opening up to this is that uh, back in around 1990, it actually began a bit before that. Uh, I uh, I have been been on a spiritual path ever since. Oh goodness sakes! When do you when? <laughs> You know, ever since 1972, I've been around the block for a few years. I got to pick a time, but I got to pick a year. 1972 is when I was first introduced to all of this, uh, when I was given a book by a friend. Uh, interesting title on the book. It was called The Book. <laughs> I love that title. And the subtitle is on the taboo against knowing who you are. And the author was Alan Watts. And I'll tell you, Terry Ann, that book became my constant companion for quite some time. And I was trying to decipher and trying to understand. It was almost like trying to learn a foreign language because it was speaking of things that so completely blew my mind that, uh, uh, quite frankly, I've been spending the the next uh, 52 years, uh, you know, uh, just uh, continuing to get a bead on, on, on what this is all about. So it kind of began then and it accelerated in the late 70s and uh, uh, really began to take off as really as a function of necessity, uh, because I had hurt my back in such a way that I, you know, here I am young and I'm in the prime of my life and I and my body is, I can't do anything. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and I had to find a way to heal myself. And so uh, uh, that's, that was really what, where push became, it got into, got into high gear. It took me a long time, uh, but it's been an amazing journey and it continues to this, to this day. Uh, if I can, uh, continue back in about 1990, I began to realize that, yeah, I've learned a lot, uh, but uh, there's missing information that I need to be aware of. And it was compounded by the fact that I began to realize that you and I, individually and collectively, have been lied to in, oh, goodness sakes, dare I say it, in just about every conceivable way that you can think of. Uh, uh, that's a pretty bold statement to make, and uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but we've been lied to a lot. Let's just put it that way. And I don't like to be lied to, and so I put that in combination with my, I knew there was missing information. I knew that I didn't know what it was, but I also knew I didn't need to know because I had the entrance requirement, and that's the burning desire, the 100% intention to keep going until I find out what it is, and uh and it propelled me through uh, some amazing times. Uh, by the way, the missing information did begin to present itself, and it just presented itself in ways that were, well, I felt like a kid in a toy store, you know? <laughs> and, and here you are, your little five-year-old kid in the toy store, and you could pick out anything you want. That's kind of the way I felt. That's definitely definitely the way I felt. And so it, it began an exciting adventure that continues to this day. So everything that I talk about, everything I write about, uh, the reason I do is because it absolutely is a, totally exciting to me. And, uh, and because it is, you know, I think some of that comes through in what I write. And I think, well, I know that there's a lot of people out there who who resonate very deeply because it excites them too, and it resonates with them too. So I got a lot of good friends that I've made uh, throughout the years out there. Uh, yeah, and it, to me, it's fascinating to have the research and not even a 30th anniversary and to have that information because it explains what I do. I work in all that unseen world, and so it really <laughs> explains it. But I will say I heard about your work. Back in early 2000, I was living in New York. I was hanging out with a guy from Ithaca, and he was teaching me all this stuff and first contact, and all of this kind of information started coming through him. So that's kind of where I kind of started tuning into what you had to say, and I think it is fascinating. And I am a kid in the candy store, too, because I just keep learning. I just keep learning more and more about, especially with, like, neuroscience coming in now, you know, how it proves what we do and how we're understanding it. But I do think it's really fascinating. And your book does start out with the whole idea of first contact. It starts out with, you know, the experiments in Roswell. And right there, we can see where so much was hidden from us, government-wise, from what they found out. Oh, no, it's not true. And even to this day, has that really changed? 
Uh, I'm sorry, even to this day, is that really Even what? to this day, talking about, you know, the ETs and the grays and the, you know, what we're seeing in the skies. Like, has that really changed? Aren't they still hiding a lot of that information? Oh, of course they are. Uh, yeah. Of course they are. Yeah. Uh, uh, but at some point, it's inevitable. It has to come out. Uh, just to be clear to our audience, to our listening audience, what we're talking about is the 30th anniversary edition of uh, my underground classic, uh, Nothing in This Book is True, but it's exactly yeah. how things are. Yeah. Now, yeah, there you go. And we're recording this on November 4th, 2024. Uh, launch date for the book is tomorrow, November 5th, 2024. So this is uh, this is an exciting time for me. Now, the the other thing I want to say about that book, and I and I think it would be good to, you know, give my views on just what it is. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give that right now in a in a in a in a capsule and that is it's a big screen view of our planetary and personal ascent into higher consciousness and all that goes with that but when we're talking about the 30th anniversary edition of nothing in this book is true but it's exactly how things are uh there's so many people uh who have read the early edition the when it, when it first came out 30 years ago and into the early 2000s and so on and I would, you know, because the book became an overnight sensation, much to my, much, completely to my surprise. I didn't think anybody would buy it. <laughs> I was totally blown away at the, uh, at, at how it just began to, uh, it became a very hot item, I'll tell you. And uh, it's continued to sell well for 30 years. But what I really want to say about that is that for people who who think I've read nothing in this book is true, uh, my response is, yeah, but you need to read the 30th anniversary edition because relative to the book you read, this book has at least 12 completely new chapters in it. There is not one chapter of the other chapters in the book that has not been left untouched, and many of them have been greatly enhanced, and, and uh, I... I uh, and just uh, brought up to speed and uh you know because i've learned a lot in the 30 years since that book first came out and uh when i was given the opportunity to come up with a with a new edition of it i decided you know what i want to take this opportunity and turn that book into exactly the way i wanted to read uh, that being said uh, there was a lot of people who really liked the earlier editions but uh for me, um, it just uh, parts of it, especially the second half of the book, just became old and stale, and I had learned so much that was new and could replace it in a just a huge upgrade. And so I took the opportunity and did exactly that. And now this book, the 30th anniversary edition, I would say it reads exactly the way I want it to. And um, I'm I'm a tough critic. I don't say that about any book, and I don't say that about my stuff if I if I don't feel it's completely up to speed. But I'm really pleased mm -hmm. with with what we've created here. So much information, and I think one of the questions I do want to ask you because I've got a, like at least twenty questions here, and I know we won't have time for it. But <laughs> you know where we are in humanity right now? What is going on in our United States? I just got off an international call, and they're all like, "Okay, we're watching y'all today, right?" But even the whole idea I've been addressing through my podcast is how can we expand our consciousness? What do we need to do? And how did we find ourselves like so down in that lifting that vibration of energy? So I know I've asked you probably three, three questions in one, but that's kind of where, how can you answer that for me? Or how can we discuss that? Yeah, well, those are great questions and, uh, and very, very appropriate considering the times that we're in. And, and what I will say to that is that uh, 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 we've known since, well, that is certain ET contacts have been have been told. You, you could also say they've been warned ever since the 1950s uh, that you and I individually and collectively, and all of us inhabitants on planet Earth, in other words, are in for some great changes in our lifetime. Nobody, no stone will be left unturned and nobody will be left un, uh, unaffected by this. And is that a good thing that's coming in? Well, yes, it is a good thing that's coming in, but there needs to be a little bit of explanation in order to, uh, I, I suspect, you know, create a proper context for it. Let's put it that way. So uh, what I'm talking about is a, 
there's two ways that I talk about that. And, and really, uh, nothing in this book is true in combination with Catching the Ascension Wave, my other new book. It just came out a year and a half ago. Uh, it, it, it tells the story as completely as I can and bringing it up to date. In Catching the Ascension Wave, I give the details on how the ET contactees uh, were told about a galactic super wave, if you will, a wave of higher dimensional energy that's coming into our solar system and will absolutely impact planet Earth as it's doing right now. When we're talking about higher dimensional energy, Terry Ann, what we're talking about is energy that is vibrating at a much faster, at a much higher rate than the typical vibratory rate of third dimensional Earth, which is where we've been for a long, long time. And to clarify that, what I mean is that the, the typical vibratory rate of third dimensional consciousness, which is where Earth has been and, and still is, although we're in great transition of moving into the higher worlds. Uh, but what, what that vibratory rate is, is considering that you and I individually and collectively live on a third dimensional planet that has unwittingly become exactly what it is not, and that is total identification with the mind. The mind was never, ever intended to be the master of our consciousness, only a faithful, uh, a comp uh, only a faithful servant to our consciousness. But we've made it our master, and in so doing, we've given up our true nature, and that is our heartfelt connection to source, what I like to call our connection to source through our heartfelt uh, higher self. And uh, uh, what does that mean? Well, the mind is in a constant state of judgment. You know, uh, we've all done our fair share of that, like uh, uh, most of us, uh, a number of times each and every day. If we look out at the reality, and if the person we're interacting with or if the situation that we're confronted with, uh, if it doesn't measure up to the standard, to the ideal that our mind has, this person should be this way, the mind is telling us. And if that person doesn't add up to that, what we do is we make him or her wrong. And the same is true for the, for the situation. Now, with regard to the judgment or the make wrong, which is I also use as a noun, uh, is, is that... Uh, uh, it's a negative thought, obviously. And if we make somebody or something wrong enough, there's usually a significant amount of emotional charge. Yeah, I'm right and you're wrong. You know, that sort of stuff. And we believe our make wrong. Okay, well, what that does is it instantly creates a pattern of energy, an energetic component in the body. That's true for any thought you and I ever think, but we don't uh, spend a lot of time in our body, most people. So many people are just haven't made that connection, but I will make that assertion. And because the thought behind it is a, a negative thought, uh, usually infused with significant amount of energy, usually negative energy, the corresponding instantly generated ener energetic component, very simply call it a sensation, even more simply call it a feeling, can only be an unpleasant feeling. Now, if you're like most people, we are very much conditioned to want to feel good. Makes a lot of sense. Feeling good is feeling good. What the heck? And so in the absence of any integrative technique, in the absence of any understanding of your innate ability to literally transmute that, that energy, uh, which gets stored in the body, it becomes stuck energy. Energy in its healthy, natural state wants to move. And the body is energy, but when the body is filled with all those judgments and all that corresponding stuck energy, the energy doesn't get to move very well, and it doesn't feel very good. So in the absence of any integrative technique, about all that's left for most of humanity is to uh, engage in suppression, to try and shove it out of the way, to try and pretend it's not there, plaster it over with positive thoughts, plaster it over with drugs and alcohol, plaster it over with gambling, uh, uh, turn on the TV and watch The Price is Right uh, all day long, uh, or uh, whatever it might be. <laughs> or just binge watch or be on social media. You're absolutely right. And you said two things very important. The energy gets stuck, stagnant. And then you also said about not being in the body. How many people yeah. are living outside the well, body and then yeah. create their whole life How can you outside be, of you there? Wouldn't want to, you yeah. wouldn't want to spend much time in a body that's filled with all that yucky feeling stuck energy. So most people yeah. are really not in their bodies. 
Okay, so that pretty well, uh, it, it what it does is it just keeps it just keeps us stuck in polarity consciousness, and that in turn perfectly keeps us from our true self, which is only available in the present moment, and that's your heartfelt connection through source through your higher self. Why does it keep it perfectly stuck, unable to access the present moment? Because the reactive mind does not know the present moment. It sees the present through the eyes of the past. It sees the present through the eyes of the unresolved emotional trauma that to some degree you and I all experience in, in the process of growing up. Some people got a huge dose of both emotional trauma and physical trauma that they've had to deal with and, and frankly don't deal with very well. Uh, and others of us have, have it to a lesser degree. But no matter how much or how little, if it remains unresolved, it is unerringly producing results and unerringly creating a present that looks very much like the past because as I said, the uh, the mind sees the present yeah. through the eyes of the past. And so yeah. that's that's the dilemma that we find ourselves in when we totally identify ourselves with our reactive mind uh, and perfectly keeping keeping us from the higher centers. Not that we, not that we never do experience joy and inner peace and gratitude and unconditional love. We do, but it's fleeting. It doesn't last. It doesn't last because the mind is going to come in and it's going to take you over just as soon as it can. Because the mind, uh, uh, according to its version of quote unquote wisdom, needs to be in control. Yeah. And so hold on. I have a couple of questions. You talked about how this whole surge of energy is coming in and the energy vibration. This is a lot of what you're hearing people talk about right now, like the solar flares coming in. What else is contributing to that energy vibration lifting? Well, a higher dimensional energy carries the energy of unconditional love. It carries the energy of inner peace, the energy of joyfulness, creativity, inspiration, uh, all of that good stuff, compassion. Yeah, all the goodies. Uh, and it doesn't have its, unlike the, the polarized mind, it does not have its polar opposite. So you get the goodies, the goodies an unlimited amount. And like I said earlier, it's only available in the present moment. Now, here is something something that really needs to be added to the equation in order to uh, create a big context picture for what's going on today, which is a very important part of the question that you asked. And that is that when we're in the midst of this higher vibratory energy and our body is stuck with all this stuck in filled with all this stuck energy and all the uh, uh, lower uh, vibratory emotions that go with it, like fear and stress and anxiety and, you know, uh, uh, frustration and, and, and like that. Not, that, not that we live our whole lives that way, but nonetheless, it's for many people uh, is, is guiding their lives and, um, and, and, and just not doing them a whole lot of good. What it does is begins to create a displacement process. See, uh, I'll, I'll just give you the bottom line here. In order to ascend into the higher worlds, we have to clean up the mess that we have made here before we can move. That includes the internal conflict that's going on fundamentally. You can't heal the planet. You can't be a catalyst towards healing the planet until you've done the internal work on yourself, until you've established some presence in your own life. Then and only then can you be an effective vessel in, in, in sharing with others. Like Gandhi said, you got to be the change you wish to create in this world. You can't just tell someone. You've got to be the living example of it. And the way to be the living example of it is you've raised your vibratory rate where it's in harmony with the higher dimensional consciousness that's coming in. But the displacement process that it's creating is, is doing just that. It's stirring up the muck. It's stirring up the dirt. Uh, you and I have been controlled on a personal and global scale for a whole lot longer than anyone, well, would probably believe. 
on the global scale, call it whatever you want. Call it the global elite. Call it, I like to call them the cabal. The most common name for them right now is the deep state. The Illuminati is another popular. It doesn't matter what their name is. The point is, is they've been c controlling behind the scenes for a long, long time. There's a few thousand of them. Basically, they're the richest people on the planet. And uh, they do not have yours and mine best interests in stake. And we've been allowing that to happen. And they've been allowed to continue to do that because they've been operating in the shadows. But when the dirt gets stirred up, when the, uh, the darkness uh, uh, gets stirred up, darkness cannot survive in the presence of the light. And now they're coming out of the shadows and into the light to where we can see. We can see their, begin to see their shenanigans and the tricks and all the things they've been pulling on us. And so their rule is coming to an end. That creates a lot of temporary chaos on the planet. And the same thing is happening on an individual level. For you and I individually, the darkness within, all that stuck energy is beginning to come to the surface. It's getting to the point to where people just can't deal with their fears and frustrations and anxieties anymore. They need to reach out and seek help, either that or be consumed by it. Ultimately, that's a good thing because you cannot go from being stuck in the mud to uh, creating, uh, to, to, to moving into your higher self without going through the middle. Uh, let me qualify that. Uh, I make the point in nothing in this book is true that everything exists in threeness. I'm just gonna throw that out right now. And if that's true, and I assert it is, you and I also exist in threeness. Uh, there's the higher self, there's the middle self, and there is the lower self. And to clarify the point, when you and I are operating or living life uh, really in an asleep mode out of our reactive mind, uh, we are in our middle self. And we do not, in order to, if you, if, if, you know, if you're hearing this and you want to go up and connect with your higher self, you can't go up there directly. You have to first connect with a lower component, and that is what I like to call the lower self. And the lower self is the cinnamon for the synonym. Did I say that right? Who cares? You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, for, <laughs> uh, for the inner child. In other words, we have to first go down and rediscover our childlike innocence. You know, the kind of innocence that we all had when we were three or four or five years old and in a toy store or looking up at the night sky or similar could be doing anything because life was an exciting adventure. Everything was exciting. Everything was fun and awesome. And uh, we need to reconnect with that. And the way to do that is you got to heal the inner child. You got to resolve the inner trauma, the inner yeah. emotional trauma. And uh, for many people, the uh, unresolved physical trauma that they're still completely at the effect of. Then mm -hmm. and only then, can you create enough awareness to move out of the middle self and reconnect with your true nature, your higher self? And that's the personal journey that we need to make. And I detail that in in great detail in, yeah. in, in my book. You talk about the Merkaba act activation. That's one of the things I want to get to, too, and the alchemy of the breath. Which of those comes first in what we're talking about? Oh, I think breath alchemy comes first okay. without question, because what that does is it allows you to discover and ultimately master your innate ability to take the very energy, the, all that stuck energy that you've been trying to run away from, trying to dig, a, you can't dig a hole deep enough to bury it because you, you might feel better temporarily, but you're going to get triggered. And before you know it, there it is. And, you, and, and, and you're just finding yourself stuck in the mud on an even deeper level, spinning your wheels. And so we have to discover our innate in, uh, ability to transmute that energy into in, that stuck energy, that life detracting energy, that if you don't learn how to deal with it consciously, it's going to start dealing with you in ways that you really would rather it didn't. But you got no choice when you're at the effect of that. But if you can discover and ultimately master your innate ability to take that same energy, not run away from it, but to expand to include it and find a more useful way of relating to it than making it wrong so you can allow yourself to have a thorough experience of it. This is what the breath alchemy technique is all about and discover your ability to transmute that into life enhancing energy.
In other words, the uh, the energy of fear and limitation get transformed into the energy of inner peace and creativity and inspiration and and uh, and, and like that. And uh, it's real stuff. What do I mean by it's real stuff? Well, I check all my clients by bringing out the scale of this hypothetical scale of one to ten, where if you're at a ten, uh, excuse me, if you're at a one, you're feeling ah. Life sucks. I mean, I don't even want to get out of bed this morning. That's a that's at a one. If you're feeling at a five at a le- on a scale of one to ten, you know you're 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 doing our you're going through the motions. You're getting through the day and all that, but something is missing. If you're feeling at a ten, you are feeling calm, centered, relaxed, present, very much in the present moment, and you are feeling very very good. That's what integration is. That's what the transmutation of the energy is. And, and that's what available. That I teach it in breath alchemy. Hopefully I'm not the only person on the on the planet who's able to teach transmutation of energy. Uh, we're in trouble if I am, because I can't work with everybody. And I know I'm not. So it's not the only way, but it's the way that I teach and it's the way that I document in my books. And, and it's I the agree. Way that I works. mean, that's kind of where I start too, is helping people to understand what their breath is about. That's the first important thing. And you do give great instruction in the book. You give us this whole chapter. I thought, oh, I bet I know what it is. And I just kept reading and reading and reading. Yes, I knew some, but I love the way in which you described it. And I think that is so important, the circulation of it, the returning of it. And I love the idea of the transmutation. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Transmute the stuck energy into this viable force of energy yeah Yeah. and that's what's going on on the planet right now even though i'm well aware of the polarities and all that's going on on that level uh i'm not i don't have my head in the sand i'm i i check in on all different levels i make it my personal business to know what the heck is going on on all of these levels to the best of my ability uh and to uh, uh, one of the great things I've learned over the years is that uh, I, I have developed my innate ability. We all have it, and it comes from being present. It comes from being connected to source, to be able to tell what's real, what's truthful, what's useful information, and what, quite frankly, is just bullshit. And there is a huge difference. And so, uh, you know, it's been called different names. You can call it lies and misinformation. Disinformation is a popular term these days. To be able to tell that from the real thing. I won't say that I'm 100% perfect, but I'll tell you, if you develop your innate ability to just on on a feeling level, if something resonates with you that this is real, because you can feel its vibratory rate, whether it's real or not. If it's real, it's going to be vibrating at a high rate. If it's not real, it's going to be vibrating at a very low, at a very dense rate. And when you're in tune, uh, you can sniff these things out very readily. So uh, I'm well aware of the polarities that are going on right here and right now. But I'll keep telling you, and I'll say it again, that this is ultimately a very good thing that's going on because what's allowing for is transformation on this planet to an unprecedented degree my goodness sakes the number of people who are waking up and tuning in it is so exciting and yeah i i'm well aware too that there's plenty of people out there who are really still stuck in the mud and i'm so thankful that uh, i'm able to help as many of them as i as i possibly can through my books and through my and through my personal work and i know you're out there doing a great job too there's so many truth teachers so many healers out there that are doing good things and I just say thank God for the times that we're in and thank God for being able to be present in in this lifetime during this time of incredible transformation. Because yeah. what we are doing, Terry Ann, like I suggested earlier, and as you well know, uh, we got to first of all clean up the mess we made before we can ascend into the higher worlds. And uh, we're doing it. Uh, we're doing it through our individual transmutation. That, in turn, is creating to the critical mass that's allowing the, propa- the planet to propel into the higher worlds. And I just keep coming back to what an exciting time to be here and to be alive and to be talking. And yeah, right. Thank you, too. I agree. I have so many questions I could ask you. But to your point, you know, as this goes to air, it will be after the election. And no matter what happens, we still all have to come back and be in our heart, no matter what. 
right? And so it's not really so much what the results are, but how we can hold the light. And I know, I know that's kind of how I try to look at it right now. Like no matter what, just keep holding that light. Our, our, our people like me, people that are working in this consciousness, it's like, that is important. Like, don't let yourself get dragged down and don't get into all the worry about what's going to happen. Just like, keep holding the light, keep holding the light, because there's still so much to transmute, to go through, to help lift this consciousness. There really is. So thank you for that. And I totally can get where you're coming from and how, yeah, we have been tricked, fooled, lied to, however you want to look at it and (laughs) hidden information, but it is coming out. There's so much coming out. You know, with with the contacts, with the greys, with the ETs, we talked last week about the Lemurians, we talked about the Arcturians, the Palladians, and all of this is part of what we're going through. And there are many people that are experiencing these kind of interactions or downloads or channels, and they don't quite know what to do. But when we can have that energy and have it acknowledged, I know last week when when Barbara Hanklad acknowledged that for me and like said, that's where your source is cut, like, whoa, that was big. Nobody's ever said that because I sometimes kind of jokingly talk about it, yet I know that to be true. Like all my crystal knowledge, like I didn't take classes. I just know this to be true, but that's what we all have to recognize. And that's what you're telling us too. But I love the idea. And I think breath alchemy, it's so important because it's going to help us. And that was one of the things I learned from my Toltec teacher, Rita, I love her dearly because I have a big emotional body, but she helped me to really use the breath to feel those emotions and not judge them. Just just keep breathing and working with them until, as you call it, transmute. And I've noticed a huge difference in learning that and working with her because I was always like, this is a curse, such a spirit, such a, such a huge emotional body, but it's not. We just have to learn how to work with it is what you're saying and mm-hmm, through the yeah. techniques that you're offering. Yeah, definitely. Sure. And I think as you are proof of, like even in the physical realm, it healed you in the physical body because of whatever accident or whatever occurred. So you had that physical evidence. Sometimes when we don't have that physical, evidence, it can be harder to prove, but yet I can feel me now. I know well, me. I healed, so- I healed my back injury because all, all illness and all disease, anything that's, uh, that's out of whack in the body is a function of the unresolved emotional uh, trauma. I agree. Another important point that I want to make that I that I document in Nothing in This Book is True is that for the first time in 16,000 years, that's a long time, for the first time in 16,000 years, there is more light on this planet than there is darkness. And what that means is that the, the laws have reversed themselves. What that mm-hmm. means by the reversal of the laws is that the dark forces, they come in and they do everything they can to keep us stuck in fear and limitation to maintain their control for as long as they can. That's balanced out by the forces of, of light who do everything they can. The forces of light, the great white brotherhood, I like to call it, of which there are 72 orders, uh, they do everything they can to uh, move us into the light as quickly as possible. Now, viewed from the level of polarity consciousness, it looks like these two forces are like an eternal struggle in one's good and one's bad. But that's only from the viewpoint of polarity consciousness. Mm-hmm. Viewed from a higher level, there are act- there's only one spirit moving through all life, and they're actually working together as timing agents. Timing is everything. Because if you move before the timing is right, you're not going to, it's it's too soon. You're not going to get it. And if you stay stuck too, too, too long, uh, well, you're not going to get it that way either. So timing is so important. Now, the thing about the more light than darkness for the first time in 16,000 years is that the laws have reversed themselves. Previously, when the darkness comes in, it was able to maintain its rule of the roost for a long, long time. And like I said, now, because of the reversal of the laws, the infusion of light, uh, this is all they're being exposed. Oh, and I'm having so much fun watching their lies come to the to the light of day to be transmuted into light. Uh, and that's it right there. Darkness cannot survive in the presence of light. And so we're oh, very much amen. in the process of healing the global <laughs> darkness and healing our individual darkness. Bringing up, that's the transmutation process. You bring the darkness out of the shadows, uh, expose it to the light, find a more useful way of relating to it than making it wrong, add a very powerful circular breathing uh, rhythm to it, and uh, you discover your innate ability to transmute that energy. And that's what's going on globally, too. These are exciting times. 
Um, I think I said that before. <laughs> you did. And I can feel your passion. Like I can feel it coming through this. I know to be true. Like I can feel that. And I think it's just so encouraging because I will say there are a lot of people that don't understand this. And there are a lot of people that stay in that darkness and we're seeing it. We're seeing it in our country right now, yeah. but we have to be the ones to help this through. And yes, I agree. Like I know where I've been through and I know what my path has been. And I know where I felt so separated from everybody, but those were big, huge emotions. I was still hanging on to. So I do understand that whole idea of getting our emotions under control. And I love that you give us the way to do it through the breath work. I really do. And I think we all have to remember this right now because I, I don't think tomorrow is going to be the answer. You know, the election, whoever wins, I know who I'm voting for, but I don't think that's the answer. There's still so much behind the government that is not going to clear up in one vote, right? And so we're going to have to hold that vibration and continue to do this work and show up and recognize. I mean, I'm in a group with Sounds True right now, bridging spirituality with business. This is exactly what we need, yeah. right? And learning how to work with that, learning how to talk about it. So yes, this falls right in alignment with everything you're saying. It really does. And sometimes I have to laugh because of where I am, but I do feel there is a purpose for why I am here. And so that has renewed my faith and my even just like, I have to do this before I leave Birmingham. My kids are on the West coast. I'll go there. Grandchildren the you know, next several years. So I know I won't be here forever, but there is something here for me in Birmingham. And I do feel that has really pushing me even greater than it ever has. And I think this helps me to understand what that is. Well yeah. said. Yeah, we have to, like Gandhi said, uh, we have to be the change that we wish to see on the, in this planet. I like the way Helen Keller said it. Uh, I, I, I love quotes, you know, little one-line quotes, but my all-time favorite came from Helen Keller. And if she, any person ever had any reason to be sad and depressed and frustrated, it certainly would have been her. But not Helen Keller. What she said is life is either an exciting adventure or it's nothing. And this is what she's talking about. You're either present in life, you're either living life through the heartfelt connection to source, or you're just going through the motions because you're still stuck in your reactive mind. Uh, uh, this is not about going through the motions. This is about... Uh, this is about being present in life. This is about rediscovering our childlike innocence and our childlike nature where life is an exciting adventure. And, uh, and it's, oh, boy, I get to go do whatever today because it yes. don't matter. Life is an exciting adventure. And when I grow I up, totally I want to be agree. a fireman and I, you know, all that, you know, all that good stuff. And I don't it's mean It's not being meant to silly. be so freaking hard. It really isn't, Bob. It really isn't. Now, I got to ask you one more question because I talk about the Merkaba often on the show. And I just wanted if you would give us a little explanation of how you explain that and work with that, the, the activation of the Merkaba, however you want to explain that to my listeners. Well, you got, about, you got about 10 hours to talk. No, but just a little bit. Is there? If not, that's okay. <laughs> we can cut this out. Yeah, if okay. not, but okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in a, in a soundbite. Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, in Nothing in This Book is True, I go to great length to show the mind the unity of life. The reactive mind, which is in a continual state of judgment, that uh, is, is at war with its other component, its, its, its intuitive component, our right brain, uh, our right brain side. Uh, uh, communication is supposed to be, be being passed through the corpus callosum to both sides, but it's like a bad marriage that never worked. And so even if one partner is telling you something that's very useful and very truthful, the other person isn't going to hear it. And the mind cannot hear uh, when, it's in, when it looks out at a world and sees only separation and division and does not see a unity in connection to source and all the rest of that. Thinks the intuitive side is crazy. So you got to show it in the only way you can, which is step-by-step -step logically, which I have done through the universal language of sacred geometry. Showing the mind step-by-step -step that there's only one creation pattern, there's only one spirit moving through all of life, uh, and uh, that the whole thing is, did not begin with the Big Bang. It began with the creation of uh, uh, with with the creation of spirit, uh, creating a uh, uh, creating a photon. Everything that we see out there is just a fractal or a hologram of that one original photon. That's all there is. All there is is unity. All there is is oneness. Now I can say that 
but I go a many, many miles further and show that step by step in my books through sacred geometry and just showing you the nature of the illusory holographic universe. Then and only then, uh, uh, and when you've integrated enough of your how, how should we say, judgments, uh, emotional trauma, etc., which we've talked about in some detail, uh, can you step into the present moment enough to begin to realize that there's only one pattern of creation, and that pattern of creation happens to be around our bodies, and under certain conditions, it can be activated. Now, in the book, I give all the details of the activation of the Merkaba field step by step. First of all, doing the necessary, laying the necessary groundwork, and then just taking you through a 17-step exercise that, if it's performed properly, will greatly assist you in the activation of this, of this uh, energy field around the body. And then giving it to you in the form of a 17-step meditation in combination with another very useful, very powerful meditation called the Unity Breath Meditation. Man, I put a lot of stuff in that book that uh, I, I think is really Which good. Is why our conversation could go on forever. I thank you for that <laughs> explanation because that sacred geometry isn't so important. And I think the realization that we are sacred geometry, every single cell we have has consciousness coming from that photon, as you described, yeah. everything around us. It really yeah. does. And sometimes people can lose that whole concept. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. I, I wanted to hear what you had to say. I feel like I've been on coast to coast with you all night, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just too early for that where I am. But yeah, that's actually where we used to listen to you up in New York, coast to coast late at night for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Your insight is just amazing. It really is. And, and all that you're doing and tell us a little bit, where can we find your work? Are you still teaching? You're still working with clients. I think you said in your books. Yeah. Well, uh, go to my website, bobfrizzell.com. Uh, I, I hope you put that up because my name is e not only easy to mis mispronounce, but also easy to misspell. So yes. I, I can give two you two S's spelling. and two L's. I've already looked at that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe I should change my name to Smith or Jones, you know, it, it would be so much easier. But for the moment, you go to my website, bobfrizzell.com. That will give you the information on how to get my books. Okay. Uh, and I do, uh, uh, it'll also give the information if you want to talk to me. I offer 30-minute free consultations. I do like people to be uh, at least uh, prepared to the degree that you've listened to a podcast like this. And uh, I got them all over the web. Just go to YouTube and you'll find me. Uh, hopefully we'll be up there real soon too. Yes. And because I've really enjoyed talking to you. Okay. I did want to shout out to uh, Inner Traditions. They are awesome. They're the ones that I saw your book and they sent you to me. So I'm very happy and grateful for the work that they put out for sure. Yeah. Right. Yes. And then we can put your links in there as well. And I do want to come back and just leave our listeners something from your heart, which I felt your passion the whole way through. So all of it's been from your heart, but how do you feel that this work and this 30th anniversary can help to empower the spirit right now? We just have to wake up, and remember who we are to begin to live and experience your true nature. It's just like I've been saying, it's, it's to rediscover your childlike innocence. I don't mean to be silly as a small child, but I mean to let go of some of our adult sophistications so we can discover the present moment, to begin to not only let go of some of these judgments that we're holding on to, but far more than that, to begin to discover our innate ability to transmute that stuck judgmental energy into far more useful energy so that you're not just acting as if. I'm not talking about going through the motions or this, acting as if. I'm talking about the real thing, being here, being now. And to be in the present moment, life does just begin to, well, it makes the shift from a black and white world to a world in living color. Life shows up. And when life shows up, it is an exciting adventure. And that's something that's contained in each and every one of us. The opportunity on the planet today is on, my goodness, to you know, the difference between now and 30 years ago, trying to talk about this stuff back then, it wasn't all that easy. Uh, yeah, I had my core group and thank goodness, yeah. the, you know, there were a lot of people, but there were a lot of disbelievers too, that, uh, that they weren't nearly as fun to talk to as you are. <laughs> well, thank you. Way. Yes. And I can even say in the 12 years I've been in Birmingham, I am starting finally 
finally to see a little bit of a shift. But I so agree with you. And I think part of it, too, is like we don't have to make it so hard. Really, we really don't. And coming back and using the breath and using the way in which we show up in our heart, I think is what you're saying. Really, come yeah. back and remember who we truly are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. And, and to live out of that inspired self is just it's just it's just, it's just out a of natural. Inspired. It's just naturally who who you and I are. It's not it's not play acting. It's who you and I are. And so it's time we reclaimed our birthright. And in so doing, we are healing the planet, which is the greatest thing we can do. In so doing, creating the critical mass that's necessary to propel the planet into this higher vibratory rate, into these higher dimensional worlds that I detail in my books that we just barely thrown out in this interview. But it's all there. It's all in my books. And you can, it is. Uh, yes. well, you, thank you can you. get the details there. Definitely. I, I know I will keep reading it. I've already been earmarking and looking at it and going through it. And it does, it takes me back to early 2000, hanging out in Ithaca and I mean, yeah, anyway, but thank you for continuing your work, for being with us today and explaining a little bit more about how we can all understand ways in which we can expand our consciousness and shine our light for sure. Well, thank you, thank you. Terry, and, th and thank yeah. you for having me, and thank you so much for the work that you are doing thank you. to raise the awareness not only in Birmingham, but also, all, you know, uh, you're, you're resonating from a high vibratory rate, and that goes out. That goes out to the world. It has more power. It has more impact than, uh, than, than we can really. Uh, it's good stuff, and, and thank, thank, you. You for, thank you for being a light worker. Thank you for your thank work. Thank you to your spirit. Thank you so much. Yes. Come back to who you truly are. Be in your heart. Heal the inner child that so much wants to be loved. I love that he shares how we now have more light than ever coming in. So even when we feel all of this darkness and wonder why, no, the light is bringing it forward so that we can transmute the energy out. Hold the light. And as I always start with, when you feel stressed or troubled, drop into your heart for a pause, for a breath, and then let your light rise and shine. I'm so grateful for this conversation and for this series of consciousness bringing them to you. And if you do need guidance, it is helpful to have someone by your side reach out and schedule a spiritual upgrade breakthrough call with me. Thanks so much for listening. I am your host. Terry Ann Hyman, to your spirit, namaste.